Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, I asked everyone what topic I should cover next and most of you voted for Momoland. And don't worry, I will be covering the other topics as well at a later date. So, in this video, as I said, we're going to be talking about Momoland, their career and what happened after their major success with Boom Boom, as well as what is going on within the company. And I also want to go over the reasons why people seem to really dislike the group and why. So, let's strap in maybe get a snack, and let's talk about Momoland and their beginnings. Before the group Momoland, there was an Mnet survival show called Finding Momoland in 2016. This survival show was a contest for 10 trainees that would be debuting in Momoland under the company Double Kick Entertainment, now known as MLD Entertainment. The 10 contestants of Finding Momoland were Hyebin, Yon Wu, Jane, Nayan, Julie, Ayan, Nancy, Hee Daisy, and Xin Xia. In the show, trainees had to show off their talents, abilities, and personality. And at the end of the show, seven trainees were picked as members of Momoland. We will come back to finding Momoland later on this video, but for now, that's all you need to know. The original plan was to debut Momoland as soon as the show finished. But Double Kick announced that the group will be debuting at a later time. The reason being that in Momoland's last mission, they had to gather up 3,000 fans, but only around 2,300 people came, so they decided to wait with debuting the girls. They used this time to promote themselves as a group. The seven winners, Hyebin, Yonu, Jane, Nayeon, Julie, Ayn, and Nancy finally had their debut, holding a showcase on November 9th, and they're releasing their album Welcome to Momoland on November 10th with a title check, Jang Kung Kwang. <laughs> Momoland's debut album was actually funded by fans, both by fans in Korea and internationally using Makestar. Their group had a goal of 7 million won, but actually raised over 10 million won. Without the fans, there would not have been a physical copy of the album. Sadly, the album didn't do too well, selling under 2,000 copies and only peaking at 28 on the Gaon album chart. In late December, it was announced that Yonru will be taking a break due to back pain and shoulder pain. She did join the group once again at the end of February of 2017, just before the group's first comeback with two members added. Daisy, a trainee originally from Finding Momoland, and Teha, a trainee that was a contestant on Produce 101. They then had their first comeback in April with nine members with a single album, Wonderful Love. The group announced their fan club name with this comeback, giving their fans the name of Merry Go Rounds. They then released an EDM version of the song. Then in August, they released a second mini album called Freeze with a title track of the same name. This album peaked at number 17 with just over 3,600 copies sold. The girls got nominated for a few awards in 2017, like Best New Female Artist at the Mnet Asian Music Awards, and they also won multiple awards that year. The group did gain some attention, both for Ju's iconic appearance in a commercial for the drink Tropicana, and then at the Asian Music Awards with a fun performance of their EDM version of Wonderful Love. But that was just the start of something that every idol group longs for. On January 3rd, 2018, Momoland released their third mini-album, Great, with the title track, Boom Boom. This was the song that helped the group explode, even getting them their first win on January 11th. They also had other multiple music award shows. Every K-pop fan knew the songs, and idols even covered it. The album peaked number 3, selling over 20,000 physical copies. Boom Boom peaked at number 2 on the Gaon Billboard and Top 100 chart and they had over 100 million streams. They were the second group to ever get a Gallant Platinum Certificate. The group got a lot of opportunities like appearing on King of Mass Singers, Hello Counselor, members got cast in dramas, and they even performed at Pyongyang Olympic Special Show. They then signed with King Records in Japan, releasing a Japanese version of their song Boom Boom, selling over 25,000 physical copies. Now there was pressure on the group to top their own song Boom Boom. On June 26, 2018, they released their fourth EP, Fun to the World, with the title track, Bam. The album peaked at number 6 with over 14,000 copies sold. Bam, the title track, peaking at number 13 on the Gaon chart and at number 9 on the Hot 100. 
The girls were nominated and won multiple awards at the end of the year at the AAA, Gaon Chart Music Awards, Genie Awards, Korea Popular Music Awards, Melon Music Awards, Mnet Asian Music Awards, Seoul Music Awards, Soribara, and more. The girls also revealed that they had their own light stick at the end of December. In February of 2019, Amal Day revealed that Momoland were getting ready for a comeback in March. Just a few days after this announcement, dating rumors between Daisy and Icon's member Jun Hyung began to spread. While YG said that the two were not dating, Emil D said that they had been seeing each other for three months. Just a few days before their official comeback, Emil D announced that both Daisy and Teha were not participating in the comeback due to health and personal reasons. So now, as seven members, Momoland had their comeback with a fifth mini album, Show Me, with the title track, I'm So Hot. The album peaked at number 7, selling over 9,000 copies. The title track peaked at number 81 on the Gaon chart and at number 36 on the Hot 100. They also won multiple music show awards with his comeback. In late June, there were rumors of Yonu leaving the group and Yonu posted on the group's fan cafe saying that she was not going anywhere. Later, in August of 2019, MLT came out saying that Yonu was recovering from a panic disorder and would not be participating in group activities. In September 4th, 2019, Momoland released their Japanese studio album Chidi Chidi, and interestingly, Yonu, Daisy, and Tea were all absent in this Japanese album. Just over two months later, it was suddenly announced that both Tea and Yonu would be leaving Momoland. Tea's contract with MLD was terminated, while Yonu would be staying under MLD as an actress. They also mentioned in the statement that Daisy was still discussing her future with MLD. Then, on December 30th, the group had their comeback with six members with their second single album, Thumbs Up. The album peaked at number 4 with almost 6,000 copies sold, and the title track peaked at number 137 on the Gun chart and 83 on the Hot 100. The girls had a very emotional music show win with their song Thumbs Up. But as this comeback was going on, Daisy came out with some very interesting information. But I will leave that as its own segment later on. On May 13th, 2020, it was announced that Daisy had left Momoland, but I think she's still under MLD, if I'm correct. In mid-June, the girls released a non-promotional EP called Starry Night. Later that same month, Momoland signed a contract with ICM Partners, having plans to get into the American market. Then on November 17th, Momoland released their third single, Ready or Not. The song did not chart on the Gun Digital chart, but did appear on the downloading chart. Most recently, Momoland had a collaboration with Chromance on a new version of the song Wrap Me in Plastic. Nayan was not present for the music video, as I believe she got sick just before shooting the music video, so she could not join her groupmates. As I said earlier, Momoland's hit song Boom Boom did some amazing things for the group. But with such a big spike in popularity, there came a lot of work and of course attention, both good and bad. The girls were very overworked. They would perform the song over and over multiple times a day. Chewy said they must have sung it 2,000 times during the promotional period. The girls were promoting Boom Boom for at least two months and throughout the year where they would still perform it. The girls were clearly getting tired. If you watch their performances throughout their promotional period, you can see how they slowly start losing that excited spirit. During this era, the girls were often talked about for their outfits. Some of the members would be wearing shorts, which is fine and dandy, but people started noticing that the girls were not wearing safety shorts. In fam camps of the girls, you could see that they were very uncomfortable, constantly pulling down on their shorts, and they were even too small for them. The girls were sexualized due to this, for something they could not control and they were very uncomfortable with. Like, this isn't even bad enough. One of the members, Nancy, was underage at the time. Another strange thing I noticed is that sometimes you could see some of the members wearing safety shirts, but not others, leading into some people believing that the company was doing this on purpose. Speaking of Boom Boom era, in February, Momoland were accused of Sajiki. Sajiki refers to someone manipulating album sales by bulk buying their own albums. These accusations were brought up when their album sold around 5,000 copies in the first month, but in the month after their release date, it sold more than 8,000 copies in one day. The company came out saying, quote, We are investigating why numbers came out like this, but we haven't found out yet. 
We have discussed it with the distributor, but we have not noticed any unusual movements, end quote. The CEO of Hanteo Chart came out saying, quote, As such, Hanteo Chart conducted a review of her data processing system in response to a rush of inquiries that we received on February 12th, and there was no error. On February 13th, because suspicions persisted, we contacted the representative of the franchise where over 90% of Omelette's albums were sold, and we received response that there was no issue, end quote. MLD once again came out making a statement about the accusations, saying, quote, Hello, this is Momoland's agency Double Kick Company. We would like to clarify the confirm that the accusations of bulk buying Momoland's albums are false. After checking with the agency, we have confirmed that the albums were sold throughout joint purchases from domestic and foreign fans, end quote. But then in late February, Huntil made a request to look into the bulk buying incident. They said, quote, after suspicion and controversy arose over the album sale numbers, the store in question was unable to provide clear evidence, and we came to the decision to file a petition after determining that the incident could be cause for public to lose trust in the charts. End quote. On May 9th, an official document with results came out. There was said, quote, The purchasing of Momoland's album has been determined to be for a contract for business nature between the export-import and the distribution company. A, and a local Japanese proportion company. They also said, quote, as it would be difficult to view this as done with the goal of international racing sales, there is no issue, end quote. However, Hanteo Chart said that this was not enough to accept the results. Almost two months later, a final result in the investigation was made. Mi Huadang Records issued an apology saying that the large purchase did not fall into Sajiki. Sadly, Momolad were very attacked, and in one instance of them getting a music show win, you can see how upset the girls looked during this time. Some people say that they believe that the Sajiki did take place and blame Momolad. Even if their company or someone else manipulated the charts, that really did not have anything to do with the girls of Momolad themselves. Before I start talking about all the songs Momoland have been accused of copying or stealing, I just want to define some words that are good to remember while we're talking about this. Plagiarism, the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. Sampling, a technique of digitally encoding music or sound and reusing it as a part of a composition or recording. Similar, having resemblance in appearance, character, or quantity without being identical. Copying, making a similar I or identical version of, reproduce. Just a few weeks after Boom Boom was released, people started saying that the song was plagiarized by a song by a Russian girl group called Cerebro. One of the members even posted a video of Momolan's new song saying, quote, The world is slowly plagiarizing music from Russia. The makers of the song came out saying that the song sounded similar because of the same genre and guitar riffs. Other songs that Momolan's Boom Boom were said to have been copied by are BTS's DNA, XID's Are You Hungry, and XID's TDD, Sai's New Face, Twice's TT and Nike, Mino and Siko's Okie Doki, Rihanna's We Found Love, and people even said some of the choreo was similar to Gangnam Style. I literally looked through all the YouTube videos just to see all the accusations, even though I don't see any similarities with some of them. When Momoland gave out their song Bam, people started making jokes that they had copied their own song. On top of that, people said that it sounded like Korean's pop, Do Dung Chit, and the rap of the song was compared to Childish Gambino's This Is America. Yet again, with their song I'm So Hot, the girls were bombarded with plagiarism allegations and accusations of copying. This time around, it was said that the song sounded like Orange Caramel's My Copycat and Lipstick, Zumni's Gashina, Jenny's Solo, Kesha's Take It Off, Ikana Pop's Emergency, and more. With their song Thumbs Up, they were accused of copying Mama Moo's Hip and Miss A's Time's Up. Now, of course, I'm not saying they did copy any of this, and I'm just making this portion of the video because I think it's important to talk about. But I also want to point out some interesting stuff that um, some people leave out when they make these claims. First of all, Momland did not copy anything. Might someone working for them have copied something? Of course. But none of the Momoland members had anything to do with the songs. So saying that Momoland copied someone or attacking them from something that sounds similar is not their fault. So I decided to do some investigation. Boom Boom, Bam, and I'm Sahara are all made by the same people. Two of the songs that are said to be similar to Boom Boom, Are You Hungry and DDD, are actually written by the same person. That person being Sinsadon Tiger. 
So if anything, he used his own song to make Boom Boom. So he couldn't be copying or plagiarizing someone else. Also, Momoland apparently copied Mamamoo. And I just want to show you guys this clip from a video um, that explains why they really didn't copy anything. While I do see some similarities with some of these examples, it is just a reach with some of them. And I don't understand why people blame Momoland why then and I don't understand when people blame Momoland when they had nothing with the composition or arrangement of their songs. Momoland have also been accused of being very rude to other idols like BTS, Blackpink, and TWICE. There's a very well-known case where they were accused of being rude to their seniors, especially BTS at the MGA 2018. The girls were accused of not bowing to their seniors and co-idols, which is seen as very rude, and they were also accused of laughing at BTS's demon when he had a voice crack. So let's investigate this claim. Here are the two clips. First one is them accepting an award and seemingly not bowing to their seniors and idols. And the second clip is when they were supposedly laughing at Jimin's voice crack. So let's actually take a closer look at the clip where they were getting their award. They are being called rude and disrespectful for not bowing. But Momoland actually bowed to everyone when they first arrived at their assigned seats. Some of them actually did bow when they did get up to get the award. And they also bowed to all the artists at the end of the show. If you want to say that someone's rude for not bowing, you could say the same for twice, since not all the members bowed when they got up to get their award. Now, of course, you can say that Momoland should have made it more obvious that they were bowing, and, you know, I'm not gonna argue with that. But they seemed very excited and shocked, which you can see in their speech, which I think is totally natural. If people, and especially BTS fans, want to call Momoland rude for not bowing, why are they not calling BTS rude when only two of their, their members bowed at their co-idols at the Melon Music Awards in 2016? I'm not attacking BTS, of course. I'm just saying that why is this only applied to Momoland when BTS has done a similar thing? In the second clip, you can see a strange reaction of Momoland when Jimin's cr voice cracks in the middle of her performance. If you watch the whole performance, you can see that Momolands were actually enjoying themselves. If anything, they looked a little sad and shocked as soon as it happened, as they stopped laughing for a moment. Same with other idols like Nayeon and Momo. Again, if you want to say that Momoland were acting strange, why not talk about the fact that Momo and Nayeon were whispering to each other at throughout the performance? Again, I'm not attacking anyone, I'm just asking why Momoland are attacked and not other idols for making faces or doing something while another idol is performing. Or what about the time when BTS was making faces at Momoland when they were dancing in front of them at the Mamas? Why were they not attacked? Once again, I'm not saying that they deserve that, I'm just saying that this is a double standard. The reaction on Twitter was so blown out of proportion, and I remember when this happened, and I found it absolutely ridiculous. 
Momoland were also accused of being rude to Blackpink on multiple occasions. Two of them I'm not even going to talk about as the girls, in my personal opinion, just looked nervous. If you, if you want to look those clips up, you can. The more known instance is where Nancy is accused of glaring at the Blackpink members when they were accepting a ward. But for people that actually know Momoland and Nancy, they know that she has a resting bitch face. She might be tired, who knows. I don't think Nancy was being rude on this occasion. The girls were also accused of being rude towards Super Junior on their show Super TV on season 2. Super Junior are of course Momoland seniors, so they were criticized for how they acted on the show. They were attacked for speaking informally, which from what I can tell is only one time when Taya did it on accident and they never did it again. They also called the girls annoying and rude because they seemed hyper and energetic, which I don't know why that's a bad thing, like why that's being rude when they were just excited. They were even complimented by the members for having good personality and charm. And they themselves even said that they were a girl version of Super Junior and that they were also known for acting hyper. Some of the fans in the comment even said that it was funny to see Super Junior see themselves in Loma Land. Chewie was also called rude and disrespectful on the show The Real Man 300 for laughing while in a military training, which is seen as very inappropriate. But then later on the show, she says that she was just overwhelmed. Chewie is a bright and energetic person, so staying serious is probably very hard for her, as that is just not how she usually acts, and I don't think she was being rude or disrespectful. Maybe a little inappropriate, but I don't think that you can attack her for that. Momoland's members get a lot of hate, especially Ju and Nancy. Juhi has often been called annoying, fake, and over the top, but a lot of the hate is directed towards Nancy, especially more recently. Another clip of Nancy that still makes it rounds today is when she was talking about how she could play a role of someone that has an eating disorder. Now, I'm not going to defend this as I really have no place to speak about something, as I have no experience with it. And I also don't speak Korean. But from what I can tell, some people were saying that it was clearly a joke. A bad joke, but still a joke. In another clip, some people say that Nancy was being homophobic. I will play the clip right now. Nancy, if you're a boy, would you rather date gays or young ones? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> so, neither. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm okay. joking. I agree. I'm joking. I'm not a boy. I can't choose. Oh. Hmm. Personally, I don't think that what she what she said was anything homophobic. I think she was just answering something that she found a stupid question. In my opinion, you can't use this clip to say that she's homophobic. I'm not going to say that you should or shouldn't be offended. I'm just showing examples of things people use to say that they dislike her. But some of the things Nancy has been going through are so upsetting to see. Nancy is half white, half Korean. So some people, mostly Korean, make it a big deal. They call her a hybrid, a mixed breed, and mixed blood, which is very rude, demeaning, and derogatory. It's like they're talking about a dog. Her body has also been attacked for some while. Ever since I'm So Hot era, people have been calling her fat and mocking her, which is just so low. During I'm So Hot era, fans would ignore her at fan signs and not cheer her on, but then cheer on all the members. I will play some clips for you guys. <laughs> recently as a lot of people probably know is that photos of nancy getting dressed were leaked in january someone backstage at our award show took photos of nancy as she was getting dressed these photos were then shared online and even photoshopped thankfully mld did make a statement saying that they were taking hard legal action and they would not be backing down and they also said that nancy was really upset by these things no matter how you feel about Nancy as an idol, she did not deserve for that to happen. And some aunties of Momoland are of course sharing the photos. I hope this person that took those photos gets brought to justice.
I think it's safe to say that the whole hiatus and finding Momoland fiasco started the day the dating rumors of Daisy started. At the time, they were probably getting ready for a comeback, as the dating rumors surfaced on February 14th, and their comeback was announced on March 6th. For Thea, I guess we can't know why she did, wasn't a part of the comeback, but I find it very interesting that Emma Lee only put out a very short statement that they wouldn't be joining due to health and personal reasons. So as Thea and Daisy went on a hiatus, they just disappeared. From what I can tell, Daisy's last selfie was posted on February 11th, and Thea's last selfie was posted two days later on February 13th. The last group photo with all nine members that I could find was posted on February 16th on their Instagram account. After that, both Daisy and Thea just disappeared completely. Fans were very worried about the two girls, even posting petitions to get an official statement from MLD. Then Yonwu wasn't with the girls. We then learned that it was because of a panic disorder. But Yono would still be posting on their Instagram, even though she wasn't promoting with the rest of Momoland. It seems that she only stopped posting soon before they announced that Tea and Yono had left. So why are they not posting? I will touch on a theory about this later. After the news of members leaving Momoland, some time went by and Momoland got ready for a comeback with thumbs up. But as I said, it wasn't peaceful for very long. In October of 2019, Daisy's mother supposedly made some very strange comments on Instagram. A fan commented in support of Daisy and Thea, and Daisy's mom responded, quote, Someone like this is out there. Thank you very much. Six months have passed, and my heart is just breaking. In society like this, we should live right and stand up against small injustices. It's unfair. I'm furious. End quote. She then later said, quote, I want to see Daisy smile on her face again, end quote. And she also said, quote, my daughter is crying and they live calmly and shamelessly. I feel hot under the collar. I want to say, don't forget that this guy is looking at you, end quote. This made fans very concerned, speculating that maybe Daisy and Thea did not go on a hiatus willingly. From what I can tell, those comments were deleted and nothing more came of it until January 7th, 2020. KBS published an interview with both Daisy and her mother. In this interview, Daisy revealed a lot of information about MLD and Finding Momoland. She said, quote, On the day I was eliminated, the agency contacted me and asked me to have a meeting the next day. They told me that they already planned to include me in Momoland regardless of my elimination and that I would debut with their next album once promotions for the first album were over. When I entered the waiting room after my elimination, someone said the company told me not to worry because they had plans for me, end quote. She later said, quote, after debuting in 2017, I got my first statement of accounts. In the section for 2016, when I wasn't part of Momoland, I had debt close to 70 million won, and they said it was part of the production cost for finding Momoland. I heard that the cost had to be divided among the members. My dreams of debuting in an idol group were so strong, and I thought it was natural to pay for production costs, so I paid, end quote. In response to this, a representative of MLD said it was true that they did offer Daisy to join the group for their upcoming album Wonderful Love and that she agreed. MLD also said that they only added Daisy to fill in some spots that were lacking in Momoland. After KBS double-checked Daisy's claim, they did find that members that joined Momoland had to pay tens of millions towards production costs. MLD said that the members all knew that they had to pay for production and each member signed an agreement with no issue. People also found it interesting because of the voting scandal that had just had been revealed with another series hosted by Mnet, Produce 101. CJ, aka the people that own Mnet, said that they were not directly involved in making Finding Momoland, and they were only broadcasting it because MLD had contracted them and they had nothing to do with it. In the KBS interview, Daisy also revealed that she had been having issues with MLD, and because of that she wanted to terminate a contract, but MLD said that she would have to pay a penalty, as it would be a breach of contract. A penalty of 1.1 billion Korean won, or almost 1 million US dollars. Daisy said that she wanted to start promoting again in May, but that she was not given the opportunity and the company just said that it would be best if Daisy would rest. Later that same day of the KBS interview, MLD came out making a statement. I will read out some of the things that they said and I will put the whole statement on the screen. Hello, this is MLD Entertainment. This is her agency's response to the report that was released through KBS today. First, there is no manipulation of votes or other fraudulent actions regarding member selection on Mnet survival show Finding Momoland. Finding Momoland was not a regular audition program featuring ordinary trainees, but a survival program aiming to debut 10 trainees from our agency 
In order to debut, the trainees had to gather 3,000 audience members, but they were unable to fulfill the conditions and their debut plans fell through. This is why it's illogical to say that the show was rigged. We terminated the contracts of eliminated trainees after the program ended, but the CEO of the agency saw Daisy's potential and recommended that she stay as a trainee in the agency. Second, the payment of production costs was included in the exclusive contract, which was based on a standard exclusive contract from the Fair Trade Commission and agreed upon by the members and their parents. Daisy agreed on this part of the contract as well when she was included in the lineup. Starting last year, Daisy's mother had threatened the agency multiple times. It appears that she has taken further malicious action because we did not respond well to those threats. We have prepared a document of proof to refute Daisy's claims and that we intend to respond with legal action. We also deeply regret that although we explained all this to the reporter in question, KB has only reported one side of the story. Then later, they posted another statement, which is also very long so I'm just gonna read some parts of it. I will again put the whole thing on the screen. Hello, this is MLD Entertainment. This is our statement regarding the biased reporting on KBS News 9 on January 7th. Here's our response to the one-sided, outrageous suspicion presented throughout the broadcast. As you said in our previous statement, the plan was to terminate the contracts of trainees who were eliminated in the program's final round. Daisy was eliminated based on the evaluation of the judges and viewers, and her trainee contract was supposed to be terminated. However, our CEO saw great potential in Daisy and suggested that she would stay as a trainee, not as a part of the debut lineup. We made our first offer to Daisy to join Momoland, who had debuted on November 10th, 2016, through a meeting in late November of 2016, and she signed an exclusive artist contract to join Momoland in March of 2017. On February 14th, 2019, Daisy's dating news was reported by a media outlet. At the time, we checked with Daisy and confirmed the news. Three days after the report was released, Daisy's mother stated to us regarding our response, quote, Take Daisy out of Momoland. I will take her out before the next week ends, end quote. We asked Daisy about this, and she was aware of it. Also, we asked if she wanted to take part in the promotions of the album that was being prepared for at the time, but we did not receive a clear response. Considering the situation, we suggested that she rest from promotions for a while. Across three instances on March 12, 2019, March 27, 2019, and July 30, 2019, Daisy's mother sent the agency a certification of contents demanding an official apology and the termination of Daisy's exclusive contract. To amicably resolve the issue, we gave a response regarding the certification of her contents on April 1, 2019 and told them, quote, we will terminate the exclusive contract without penalty, end quote, through a meeting with Daisy's lawyer. However, Daisy's side rejected the agency's offer and additionally made an unreasonable monetary demand. We could not agree to this. So on August 29, 2019, through a certification of contents, we rejected her request for termination of the contract and explained the amount of the penalty in case she wanted to terminate the contract. It is unreasonable to state that she suddenly expressed her desire to promote again in May. In this kind of situation and timing, and starting late August, we could not contact Daisy at all because she one-sidedly refused to respond to our attempts to contact her. We inform you that through our legal team, we have made requests to the court and the press arbitration commission for an official apology about KBS's biased reporting and a prompt correction of the report. Then, at some point, Daisy was removed from Momoland's lineup on the official website, and then she was announced to be gone from Momoland, but I assume she's still under the company. The thing is that the, some of the stuff that MLD said just doesn't add up or doesn't make sense. Just a little research will tell you that MLD asked Mnet to help them with finding Momoland, not that MLD contracted Mnet. And why would they? MLD didn't have any money, so why would they spend money to basically hire Mnet? On top of that, throughout the statements made by MLD, they would just ignore Daisy's biggest claim that the show was rigged. They gave a dumb reason why this couldn't be, but it really does not make any sense. Plus, with Mnet's history of rigging shows in the past and letting it happen, why would Finding Momoland be any different? Also, in the statement made after Finding Momoland was aired, MLD said that the eliminated contestants would be returning as trainees, but now they're saying that they plan to end the contracts with those trainees. MLD also made it sound like the girls knew that they had to pay, but why was Daisy so shocked to get her statement of accounts for 2016? Maybe because they didn't make it clear that she had to pay if she joined late. They also make it sound like it's completely normal for a trainee to pay for stuff like this when it really is not. 
people believe that Daisy and Teha cannot speak about what happened, as Teha really hasn't spoken out since she left. She probably had to pay that 1.1 billion won fee to leave, and can't talk badly about MLD or Momoland. She hasn't really said anything about Momoland, but she gave a really vague answer in one of her Q&As about Momoland, and I'll play that clip now. Momoland is the one who came to the Momoland. I want to show my voice to you in my voice. I want to talk to you and talk to you in the company. I want to go to the other side. I don't want to talk to you about the members, but I don't want to talk to you. 데이지랑은 가끔 밥도 먹고 쇼핑도 하고 <웃음> 그러고 있어요. MLD was probably punishing Taya for whatever reason and not letting her post on a mobile and social media or, of course, it could just be that she didn't want to post on mobile and socials. As for Daisy, she doesn't seem to have any public social media right now. If we assume that she is still under MLD like Yonu, why is she not posting on social media? Maybe because the company is scared that she will say something. Because Yonu has her own social media and we will get to that in a little bit. Daisy is with her family from what I can tell. What is even more interesting that Lily, Daisy's sister, has been posting on TikTok with Daisy and in the TikTok bio it says this is Lily's TikTok account not Daisy's for legal reasons. There's also another interesting thing from all these TikToks on the page is one time when they were answering questions and I will play this clip right now. First question, why doesn't Daisy have her own TikTok? Cause I can't. Question two, so does that mean you're not going to upload any more videos of Daisy? Nope, there's definitely more to come, but there's going to be more of me as well for legal reasons. There's also another clip that's also very shady and I just think that it's very clear that Daisy cannot personally have any social media accounts for whatever reason. So you agree? What? As I said earlier, Yonu does have her own social media accounts, but she has been posting some very strange things, making fans worried. In early June in 2020, Yonu posted on her fan cafe where she said some really interesting things that some fans took a slight hints about her time in MLD and Momoland. She said, quote, Everyone, how many of you are brave enough to give up your youth for a new start? I don't have that kind of boldness or will, but in the past and even now, I have endured, tolerated, and suppressed how I feel, but it didn't work out. I didn't betray anyone just because I wanted to go a different line of work. Do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood and criticized by the people you love? Please stop it. You know I can't explain things one at a time. No matter what changed about me and how hard things were, I don't want to linger over it anymore. I don't want to keep crying. I just want to create a future and be happy with, with all of you whom I love. You have worked hard. Right now, I have a new job. I don't have any other choice. I have to do this to continue my dream. I have to do this to live. I have to do this to be able to meet you all. End quote. Fans believe that she was saying that she didn't actually want to leave Momoland, but rather that she was forced out. Another time, she posted on a fan website and said, quote, how many people would have the courage to give up their occupation that they're invested their youth in? I don't have that courage and I don't have the will to, end quote. More recently, yet again, she posted something on her Instagram that people found very cryptic and took it as another hint. It's a quote from a book that says, I hated and resented so much, but after becoming that age at which I am no longer afraid of death, I realize nothing is more needed except to say I love you to the person I love and to say the weather's gotten cold to the person I hate, end quote. I can't say for sure what is going on, but I'm not alone in saying that this is kind of weird and the girls are probably giving us small hints about what's happening. From what I can tell, the current members of Momoland cannot talk about Thea, Daisy, or Yonu. For Momoland's comeback BAM, the girls talked about their sudden popularity after Boom Boom. The girls said that the water dispensers, TV, air conditioner, dehumidifier, and laundry machine were all broken at their dorms. They also said they didn't even have cell phones and that they only got their first cell phone after their first win. In March of 2019, one of Momoland's members, Yonu, revealed something very interesting. She was on an SBS show and there was a cash prize for the winner of the show. When she was asked what she would do with that money, she said that that would be her first earnings since she hadn't made any money since her debut. She also said that she was in debt with MLD and she had a price limit on her food. We can assume that she's not the only member that is still in debt with the company. We can also assume that all the money that they're making in their comebacks is going right back to the company. On a show called What Is Your Soul Food, Momoline talked about food and the topic of their new brother group, 
T1419 came up. Nancy talked about how the CEO would treat the two groups very differently. I'll just play the clip for you guys. <laughs> Momoland has talked on multiple occasions about what kind of concepts they want to do, like ballots and gold crush concepts, but they somehow still stick to the similar concepts. So the company is most likely making them stay to a similar concept and sound even though the members want to try some other things, even though people say it's getting old and repetitive. Their girls are getting hate for something they have no control of, and they even want to change it up. Another thing Momoland gets a lot of hate for that is really on the company is the music video for BAM. People got very sad at the girls for wearing outfits that were seen as mockery and cultural appropriation. Most groups don't get to control their own sets and outfits and so on, so attacking the girls are not is not fair. Of course, you can say that the video is disrespectful, I'm not disputing that. From what I can tell, Emily hasn't even made a statement about the music video, so it kind of just shows that the company really doesn't care. In a video made by Chenny Lee Su, they talk about a very interesting theory. I don't know if it's theirs, but I'm just gonna play the clip as they really say it the best, and I do actually agree kind of with it. MLD Entertainment is a fairly small agency with limited resources. We know this because they have sought out help from Mnet, 1TheK, and even crowdfunding to help cover the expenses they could not afford to cover. This possibly led them to be in debt. So you can imagine that the success of Boom Boom brought in the revenue the company desperately needed, allowing them to pay off their debt. All of the profit was now gone, and MLD Entertainment was now faced with trouble. Momoland's revenue alone was not enough to keep the company standing, and sustaining a nine-member group was no longer possible. They could now either disband Momoland without having made any profit, or play it cruel and make profit off of someone else's frustration. And while the second option wasn't the most ethical, it would have been the most profitable for the company. And so they put members Daisy and Deha on hiatus, hoping that if they'd hold them off for long enough that they'd get so fed up with the situation to the point where they would request for their contracts with MLD Entertainment to be terminated. In this case, MLD Entertainment would not be at fault since the members are the ones requesting to have their contracts terminated, ultimately breaking the terms of their contract, giving MLD Entertainment the right to demand a compensation fee for this very reason. If the plan went over well, the company could generate around 2 billion Korean won. As for my own theory, I do think MLD is keeping Momoland's comes up similar to get more buzz around them. The girls clearly want to try something else, and they have worked with great composers like Shin Zadong Tiger. So maybe MLD is keeping it this way because they don't want to try anything new or take risks, and they want people to talk about Momoland even if it's in a bad way and to attack the girls. The girls have gone through so much. Some people even argue that the success of Boom Boom was a curse in a way. On top of the attacks regarding their songs, music videos, and concepts, they're also disrespected by their own company. They're still human that get affected by these things. Momoland has been attacked by multiple fandoms. They were attacked and mocked after the incidents with BTS and Blackpink. They were treated badly by other fandoms while on music shows. For example, there's a clip of NCT fans turning away from Momoland while they're performing on stage. You don't have to love a group to show some human decency towards them. They were also mocked for their MR removed videos, which I personally don't want to rely on as those re recordings can be false, edited, and so on. And even so, every group that I know has had an MR removed that didn't sound great, but yet Momoland is the only group that gets attacked for it again and again. They're called untalented, bad singers, and not good enough to be idols, which is really upsetting to me because they're actually really talented. They're ridiculed for everything and anything they do. Some people will find anything to make up another reason to dislike them for whatever reason. If you're just a regular K-pop fan, you might have heard some horrible things about Momoland that might even not be true. Some people are painting a very bad image of Momoland, and in reality, they're actually really caring girls. Prior to their debut, they were appointed as ambassadors of the International Relief Development NGO Plan Korea. They volunteered to fly to Vietnam to encourage students to participate in a kindergarten construction. Just after they debuted, they visited a children's hospital to spend time with patients. They were signed as the new ambassadors for the Korean Red Cross Blood Services. They participated in multiple events with the Red Cross and they hosted a blood donation event and even donated themselves. 
For Momoland's BAM comeback, they held a showcase, and for each person that bought a ticket to the showcase, the group will be donating double the ticket price to help students with medical treatment that have been in car accidents. They donated concert earnings to children in need, and they visited a fan in Manila who was in a hospital. In 2018, the girls did the ASL challenge for fundraising to build a hospital and donated to the project. In 2019, they participated in a charity concert for victims of violence and abuse. And in 2020, the girls donated 10,000 mask cases to Plan Korea. They donated 1,200 kilos of rice to people in need through Red Cross. They donated 1,500 sanitary pads to families that have low income. They held an online concert where all the proceeds went to people struggling due to the pandemic. They participated in a photo shoot to support women's rights. And once again, they encouraged people to donate blood in these trying times. And they also participated in a concert to help unprivileged and socially disadvantaged families. At a fan meeting, a fan starts crying and the members immediately go up to them and hug and console them. They are very caring people and they love their fans. In a V-Life, Juvie even broke down talking about how hard 2019 was for idols. And she talked about how she just wanted every idol and every group to be happy. These girls are so caring and they're not perfect. No one is, but does that mean they deserve everything that they have been subjected to? That is gonna be it for this video. I hope I covered everything that is important to talk about. I just wanted to talk about Momoland since they seem to be very disliked and alienated, alienated in the K-pop fandom. Um, I just really love them and I care about them a lot. And it's sad to see that they don't look as happy these days. But please tell me what you thought about this video. Are you a fan of Momoland? How do you feel about the topics that I've talked about in this video? I want to thank Momal and Facts on Instagram for helping me with some details of the video. I really, really appreciate it. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.